PSA, you do not need to pay for a tutor to do well on any standard test. I know a lot of people pay for tutors and it helps them a lot, but this is completely unnecessary. I myself am pretty cheap and going into this process, I knew that I was going to do everything I could to not have to pay for a tutor. And so I studied for all of this myself. These are the eight strategies that I used. Step one, start early, like super early. I started studying for the PSAT a year before I took it, and that was over a year before I took my SAT. So I was studying for this for most of high school. These are not the types of exams that you can cram for, and so I think it's really important to space out your studying over months and months and years if you have the time. Step two, take a practice test to see where your weak spots are. Your school will probably give you some practice exams, and if not, there are plenty of free ones online. Step three, even though there are a lot of free exams online, I highly recommend buying this manual for the PSAT and this one for the SAT. I used both of these, and if you're not going to use a tutor, then you need some sort of direction to prepare for the exams. Also, do not be stingy here. I can be a pretty stingy person, which is why I didn't want to pay for a tutor, but you should splurge on the most current editions of these books. It will really hurt Hurt you if you get the cheaper version. Every year they make slight changes to the exam and if you want to maximize your score you should be going with the most updated manuals. Step 4. After you've taken a practice exam and you've identified your weak spots, focus on your weak spots. That's where there's the most room for improvement. So for me, my weakest spot was reading. I am still really bad at reading. I spent a lot of time just learning the basics, like just going over vocabulary. In the PSAT book that I used, there were hundreds of vocabulary words that they had in the back and I made flashcards for all of them and I memorized all of them. I can't say that I still know the definitions of all those words, but when I took my exam, I knew all of them. <laughs> Step five, make sure you know the material. Before you start taking exams repeatedly, make sure you understand all the concepts, make sure you know all the equations that you need for the math math section, make sure you know the difference between effect and effect, and make sure you understand the way the exam is laid out. Once you have mastered all the material and the concepts, step six is to drill practice exams and make sure you time yourself and take them in a very controlled setting. Go into your room or an office and lock the door and put a post-it note on the outside of the door that says you're taking a timed exam so no one bothers you. This is what I did. I still have the post-it note that I would put outside of my bedroom door when I was taking a practice exam. It says taking a time test shh, or something. When I was finished with exams, I saved the post-it note as like a memory of the struggle. <laughs> I don't know why I still have that note. But make sure you are taking these exams in very controlled settings. Step seven, make sure you grade your practice exams and understand what you did wrong. This step is super important and I really hated doing it, but it helped me a lot. You can't improve unless you understand what you did wrong and correct it the next time. Step eight, before exam day, make sure you are super well rested, you have eaten food, and all your calculators are charged. These are the eight steps that I used to prepare for the PSAT and the SAT. I hope this was helpful. If you liked this video and it was helpful for you, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.